My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive. The character of Barry Allen is one of the most vital characters in the history of comics and yet from the mid 1990s to the mid to late 2000s he fell into obscurity. Jay Garrick was the flash of the golden age but then he disappeared for years. Barry Allen's flash was first introduced in showcase number four in 1956 heralding the beginning of the silver age. His final appearance in 1986 brought about the end of the DC universe via the Crisis of Infinite Earths, while in 2011 his actions in Flashpoint brought about the DC New 52. And yet despite all that, up until that point he wasn't that popular, or, or at least as popular as he was a couple of decades prior. His former sidekick Wally West, the former Kid Flash, had taken over his role of the Flash, being the first sidekick to fulfill the promise of taking over his mentor's role. Yet despite that, up until this story took place, people were still asking, when's Barry coming back? As if Wally was just a substitute teacher and Barry was the real one. The origin of how this story came about is retold in the introduction of this volume by Dan Ryer, Mark Wade, and other Brian Augustine. Mark was about to start his run on the book, and the only question fans were asking were, when is Barry coming back? When is Barry coming back? At first they agreed that bringing him back would be a mistake, but then they got to think. What if Barry did come back and ended being one of the worst things in the world? What would his return mean to Wally? Who, while he took up the Flash mantle, still had a lot of growing up to do. He really loved his Uncle Barry. He loved him more than he loved being a superhero. He loved him more than he loved being fast. And he was dealing with issues of immaturity, self-doubt. Plus, he wasn't anywhere close to how, how fast Barry was. The reason for that last one is answered in the story. So if Barry comes back, will Wally ever grow up? Well, spoilers, by the end of the story, everyone in the DC Universe and the Rears themselves will consider Wally as the Flash. And story-wise, this the story begins when Wally and his friends are at a get-together, and suddenly Barry walks right through the door saying, Merry Christmas, everybody, as if nothing has happened. So yeah, there is a bit of a shock for everyone. At first, everyone is understandably surprised, but happy. But then everyone begins to accept this, and that this is indeed Barry Allen. Also, since how Jordan was there... He used his ring, and his ring said that he's the real deal, or at least he thinks he's the real deal. Heck, even Wally accepts it. However, even early on, something seemed off about the way Barry was acting. An issue later, while teaming up with Barry, an event happens that crushes Wally's spirit, and there's a real question on whether or not, not just will he become the Flash again, but will he ever run again? One of the things I really loved about the DC Universe at this time and that is highlighted during this arc is the sense of legacy. Yes, in this volume, the Golden Age Flash, Jay Garrick, but we also have the mostly forgotten Johnny Quick and Max Mercury. They all have different color schemes, personalities, and how they came upon their abilities. They might be a supporting cast of this book, but that doesn't mean they take a back seat. For the rest of the series and various other Flash series, since they stay around in some capacity and perform support. And that's the major reason why I really love the Justice Society. You have all these characters from decades ago brought into the present day and you find out that they're really great characters. It's like the old saying goes, there aren't any bad characters, they're just characters written badly. Heck, in this story... They all help Wally strengthen his resolve so they can finally tap into and reach his potential. It wouldn't have happened otherwise. 
This story also serves as an origin story for a particular villain character via retcon. Normally, I'm uneasy when it comes to retcons, but a lot of thought and seemingly planning went into this, and the resolution of the story is earned. I feel that this is a story arc that people finally took notes not just of Wally, but of Mark Wade as well. He nailed nearly every character in the story, setting up a solid foundation for future writers to add on to their character. The only character that got a bit of a shaft I feel was Linda Park. She doesn't do much, and in the climax, she's only there to be saved. It was impressive how Mark Wade introduced the past speedsters without a ton of exposition, and right away you had a good idea about them and their story and their history. Another interesting facet of the story is it's basically a mystery tale done so well that you have to read a second time before you realize that all the clues are present. The best part of the story, I feel, is that it's a great jumping on point for the series. You don't have to have know who the Flash is, uh, his backstory or anything. You don't need to have read previous issues. The story's compiled into a single title, so there aren't going to be any crossovers here. And by the end of the arc, there's major character development with Wally. You know, what's also obvious is how much the writer Mark Wade really loved the characters and the history of the comics that he was writing about. Hell, we're talking about the same guy who's such a comic geek that he knows Superman's social security number, which is 092096616 as of Action Comics 340, by the way. As far as the artwork goes, for the most part, it's very good, especially during the fights. But I was suspicious, and my suspicion was correct. This is yet another story where there were multiple arts used, and it's noticeable about halfway through the story. You eventually get over it, but like I said, it is noticeable. Also, I did see an eye transition with some of the characters, but other than that, the art flowed well, and it was really in sync with the writing. So yes, I definitely give this a recommendation. Just a little backstory before I finish up. My history with The Flash began when I started reading comics in about 1990. I started about at the same time the CBS Flash series was going on. I'd read, I'd read an issue here or there, but I really couldn't get into the series. And it's strange, but I actually started to get into the series and read it constantly exactly after this story arc came out. But the thing is, I didn't know that this story arc even existed until years later. And I didn't even buy the trade and read this story until only a few years ago. Also, here's the thing about this story. While it's called The Return of Barry Allen, it's really about Wally West. The sad fact is, while Barry is an important character, there just isn't a lot of trades about specific standout stories for him. But they are a few. One is The Trial of the Flash. The next is the life story of The Flash, and the last one is Flash Rebirth, which came out in 2009. From the 1990s to just a few years ago, everyone from comic fans to the general public knew about Wally West due to the Justice League anime show, and either forgot or didn't know about Barry Allen. And now, after his rebirth in 2009, 23 years after his death, the new TV show and the movie upcoming, it's Wally who's fallen into the background. What a twist. And until next time, goodbye.